Hello and welcome back to Let's Try a Myriad of Different Demos from the Steam Next Fest. Before it ends, um, I'm starting the video off with this one called Crisp Cube, but thank you, thank you Train for your input. Um, I'm trying to showcase some of the games that you'll, you might miss. This one um, is inspired, I'll say inspired, but I think uh, this is almost a call out for the dev. Yo, this game, you know what you did. This game is a complete carbon copy, as far as I'm concerned, of a game I played on the PS1. Um, it's a game I really enjoyed as a kid on the PS1 called Intelligent Cube. Things are a little bit different. Listen, this is just Intelligent Cube. I want, I'm not gonna hear it. I'm not gonna listen to any justification. It's just Intelligent Cube. But why am I showcasing this game? Um, Intelligent Cube is great. I, I, I think that more people should be able to play Intelligent Cube, but it's it's not really, it's not never been ported, it's never been reimagined, it's never been remade, and it's a decent game. It's a really, really tricky game, but it's one that deserves acknowledgement and, and one that deserves to be played. It's, it's really good. I think that uh, you're allowed to be in, influenced by other games, and I think that it's even okay if you want to make a game that is very, very similar to another one, as long as you produce something new. And in this case, no, it's the same game. But uh, in this case, it's a game that is no longer accessible. Can't really play Intelligent Cube. Uh, I should stop talking about how this game is like Intelligent Cube and just tell you what this game is, really. Basically, this is, it's a really weird one. It's, it's a, it is a puzzle game. Um, obviously. It's a, a game in which you are trying to eliminate the cubes on the screen before they basically crush you. It's it's a tricky game. The, things can develop and, and get really hard very, very quickly if you're not careful. That sound effect is really loud. I, I turned things down a lot, uh, but that one, that one is really, really loud. So yeah, it's it's kind of neat. I mean, here's the thing: the this this game's got some kind of cute vibes going on. It's got a cute little uh, Shiba dog, whatever. Um, it's got some it's got some cute animations. The original game was surreal and almost creepy. You were like this little, you know, you were this just a man trapped in this world in which the you know the, these cubes are constantly harassing or, or like rolling him down and and if he fell off he, he, it would just be traumatic you, the guy's just like ah! and then you you know that sound effect is still loud i've turned the sound effects down and it's still like insanely loud i feel like that is an actual bug let me try and turn it down i might even turn it off i'm gonna i'm gonna turn it off for now Let's see, if it's still loud, then that's an actual problem. So, I mean, how are you eliminating these cubes? Well, you can you can probably tell based on like what I've been doing, but you're waiting, you're, you're setting a trap, and uh, as soon as the cube has arrived at the trap, you're setting it off. Yep, that sound effect is still loud. You'll have these, that, that, that sound effect might actually kill this video. <laughs> you have the green cubes, which when you kill, give you a very basically in like an area of effect uh, trap that you can set off at your discretion, which is what's creating this very loud sound effect for me. And then you have the black cubes, which um, you want to uh, avoid destroying. Um, there should be a way of, oh, there's, a, oh, there's actually time. So um, you want to avoid getting crushed by the cubes. You also want to avoid um, destroying the black cubes. They, I, I think originally they would actually just make part of your landscape gets destroyed. Um, over time, this this row will eventually start, you know, dropping off. These will start like dropping off one by one. I don't know if that's true in this game. It was true in the original game. So I have to, I do have some weird bullet time. Oh, it tells me in the bottom left corner. There was a way to speed up the cubes in the original game. I'm not sure what what has been added and what has been done away with. We definitely didn't have bullet time in the original. I do kind of wish, I, I keep pressing the button prematurely and that seems to get rid of the trap. I feel like that doesn't really add much to the game. Maybe that's a, also a bug or maybe that's part of the design. But yeah, this is, it's it's a simple, ooh, we're, we're getting down to the wire here. Uh, and I screwed up my trap. So here's the problem, right? What happens when you don't get rid of the cubes before they disappear? Bad stuff. 
Yeah, so our our level still drops off. And you have a map this time. And I say this time, I mean, I don't think we had a map in the original Intelligent Cube. Um, so things things are a little bit different. I mean, this is a very simple game. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I definitely think that once you see it, you kind of get it. You understand what's going on. It's it's a clever game. It's a it's a challenging game, and it's a very it is clever. Oh man, I hate the the trap disappears if you press it prematurely because I, I get impatient, <laughs> so I'm I'm losing my traps. Yeah, I really I honestly I really don't have much to add to this one. I just wanted to showcase it real quick. If you're a fan of Intelligent Cube, and would love to play something similar to it. Um, or if you've never played Intelligent Cube and would like to play, you know, try it. I, I think that this is basically a great way of, of doing that. Um, I have no idea how much they're going to charge for this game. I don't think it really matters. I mean, it, I mean, of course it does matter, but... What does the music remind me of? It kind of reminds me of Super Monkey Ball a little bit. So we have bullet time. I don't really... That's an odd thing to add to the game, if I'm being honest. You know what? I'm actually not going to finish this level because there's, there's a lot left to go, I think. Yeah, like I, I really don't think you need more than that. Easy to tell what kind of game that is. Let me be clear, I'm showcasing this game because I actually think it's a great thing that the dev here has done. I, I think that this game should be redone um, because it was actually a really cool game. If you haven't tried anything yet, maybe give this one a go and see if it's your cup of tea. Let's check out the next game. All right, this is Synthetic 2. Now, uh, transparency, I have not played the first one. I own it. But I haven't played it yet. I might even feature it on this channel at some point. But um, this is new. I figured I'd give it a shot. See what it's what. Just to, I just want to, I just need to underline something. So a new trend I've been seeing amongst some indie games is they start the game with their default volume settings at like half or even below half. That's a great trend. Keep that trend going. And devs of Synthetic 2, please consider that as, as a thing because when you have a long loading screen to get into your game and you cannot access the settings and the music is as loud as possible, it's really, really frustrating. <laughs> Consider it. Let's try Synthetic 2. I, I know this, this is basically, a, um, I believe, a tactics shooter. Kind of want to just jump into the game, but maybe we'll try the tutorial. All right, the uh, the tutorial seems to be bugged. That's okay. This game is uh, in early alpha. Let's just uh, try the game. Let's give it a go. So I already know I'm bad at this game. It's one of those games I'm, I will want to play quite a bit of in order to get better at. I'm wondering why, what the um, conveyance is here, that we have a bullet in the chamber. Do we have cover fire? That was good. Um, yeah, so you really want to like stop maybe ooh, oh god You really you really do need to kind of like stop and aim it's I think the best way to like ensure your shots Okay, oh did I just teleport? Interesting. Okay. We got we got different different abilities Also, I seem to be teleporting where oops wrong button where I'm aiming this is this is a tricky game already that enemy that enemy was actually quite tough Okay, let's uh, can we get a headshot? Nope. Oh That was a that was like a like a, a, a screen wipe. I didn't I was not expecting that. What do we got shield dome? Okay, cool and then fusion blast so we got we got we got some abilities. Oh god, no, not this guy again. All right. Just because you're less accurate while you're moving does not mean don't shoot. It just means you're going to be less accurate. So don't count on your shots. I I can I can tell already this is going to be a very edit heavy portion of this video. This game is very difficult to talk over. Okay, all right. Oh, you can you can hit the uh, ow. Uh, you know what? Let's um let's eject. Reload. Dome up. 
Okay, that was good. The shield, um, their energy shield will actually recover, so you want to, like, get, get in quite a few shots. But you also have energy shield, so you need to use that as well. There's a lot going on in this game. I actually kind of like it. Oh, okay, yep. So if they're close like that, I mean, those units uh, definitely thrive on moving in closer. And you can spray your shots a little bit more haphazardly. Nice. We got some more stuff. I didn't pick that up. Is that ammo? We got some more ammo. Do we have to worry about conserving ammo, I wonder? Ow. This is a, the kind of game I might bind these all of these buttons onto buttons on my mouse. Kill. Yes. That was good. We're doing we're doing well. I'm actually I'm I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable now. The the energy shield really is our our buffer. Knowing that it, our energy shield will come back, I can I can be a little bit more risky. Um, and don't have to concert, like, make sure we do everything perfectly. Now that I know that we have limited ammo, maybe not wasting our ammo is a good idea. I do li like the idea that since we do have to remove our magazine and, like, reload manually, and because we do have limited ammo, you have to actually worry about, like, when you're reloading, if you're wasting that. Like, right there, that was dumb. So we got a new, we got a new gun, which is quite nice. It's like a little assault rifle. I see that the these barriers kind of light up when we hit them. I'm wondering if you can destroy them. So that was that was our first level. Quite quite easy in the grand scheme of things, but I'm sure things are gonna get way more difficult in the long term. Oh wow. I actually might bind the reload button to my mouse since I'm doing it more often. Oh, we have a we have a grenade that I haven't used yet. Oh no, that wasn't a grenade. I thought it was a grenade. Jammed. Okay, interesting. They've taken a lot of time to consider like how guns actually work in this game, which a lot of games don't really care about. You know, you when you when you reload your magazine, you just you know you get all the bullets from that magazine. Doesn't matter. Uh, when you reload your gun, it just happens magically. Your dude knows exactly how to reload a gun and will do it perfectly every time. And those are th never things you really have to worry about. But this game is like, nah. You know, reloading your gun is not perfect every time. Ammo is a thing you have to conserve. Ammo is a thing you'll waste if you unload your magazine right away. Wasted ammo. Ooh, that was the wrong button. Let's just teleport across that. I don't, I don't trust it. So we only have eight bullets left, but seeing as I'm trying to conserve my ammo, let's let's use it. I wonder if stealth is something we can also consider in this game. I wonder if like traps, like using the environment, like maybe if that guy, if I had let that guy walk across this, would he have taken damage? Ooh, that was nice. That ability is really good close up. So this is way more um, like considered and, and slow than a lot of these kind of like shooter type games. And I, I really do appreciate some of the attention that has been given to how gun mechanics work. Doing, doing all right. Things are working out okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Firing more makes our accuracy fall. We almost lost our energy shield there, so now we gotta like get some cover. This is actually really cool. I'm I'm really enjoying the pace of this game. I also appreciate that like you know the pistol is no slouch. We're doing better with the pistol in some ways than we were with the assault rifle, or I don't know if it was an assault rifle or just a machine gun. Listen, I I am not a gun aficionado in any sense. I can hear the commenters are like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> the, the game is does not shy from spawning you right in front of enemies. And now I have to move into the level which I have not explored, which I don't know what's it's it's. Wow. Okay, there's a lot of stuff going on here now. We're doing all right though. I don't think I even lost my energy shield. Oh, he can, he's inside my, my shield, so he can probably hit me. Oh no, wrong buttons. All the wrong buttons. Still the wrong buttons. 
Well, get 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 out of here. Get out of here. My dude, I don't want you. I don't ever want you. What what are you doing? What what button did that and what button can I unbind so I never see that screen again? That's awful. <laughs> I wonder if certain weapon types are gonna do better damage against certain shit. Like, this thing's like firing energy based shots. I wonder if it's doing more damage against our energy shield. Similarly, it seems like my, uh, you know, normal kinetic based, for lack of a better term, uh, ammo is doesn't do very much damage against energy shields. One of this is a, one of those games where you're gonna want to have, you know, weapon variety in order to take enemies on a little bit more intelligently. Oh, did, did the enemy just kill him? Was that like friendly fire there I saw? I love me some friendly fire. That's one of my favorite things. Um, if the enemies can actually hit each other and if they're affected by their own traps, I love seeing that in a game. I know it's a little bit more effort to to balance and to take care of, but it it's a lot more fun for me. And it, it just seems, yeah, th th there is friendly fire. It just means like the enemy doesn't have this like overt advantage. I have to assume then the environmental hazards are also going to affect them. We did pick up some ammo for, for this guy, so we can come back to using the assault rifle. I actually really like this so far. This game is uh, is actually really cool. It's it's not like it's not hectic. It's actually quite cool and considered um, over a lot of twin stick shooter. That's what it is. Oh, ouch! Wow, that guy was taking aim on me well in advance. I am, uh, I am interested to find out what we're going to be doing with our currency. It's really the only thing that concerns me, me personally. Oh, we we finally lost our shields. We took a little bit of actual damage. So, I mean, I have a lot of questions. I don't really... Whoa, did we take... I think there's a problem going on with the game. I don't think that this is supposed to be like this. <laughs> game is in early alpha state. Reserve judgment. Reserve judgment. It's okay. If I mean, if a bug is gonna happen, I'd rather ha it happen to my advantage. <laughs> I wonder if it, does this thing explode? It does. I don't know if that did damage though. I love that enemies take friendly fire. I can't really like. I I, I already said it, but it's just something that I really enjoy about this game. I wonder if there's like. Okay, so I can shoot this guy over this like chest high wall here. I wonder if like it makes it less likely for him to hit me. I haven't really addressed it, but I also really like the music in this game. Oh, this guy is hitting me hard. Okay. Okay, so that thing does actually like destroy their energy shield. So you can use the environmental like objects to hurt them and then like go in for the kill. Ooh, very different environment now. <clears throat> A little bit harder to see things. Do a little bit, bit of exploration. Boss spider. Okay, ooh, we got a lot of stuff going on. All right, yep, yep, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on. Gun is jammed. That, this, this needs to never, I, I, I never want to see this. This is the worst idea. <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm sure there's a very good reason to have that screen, but it's, it has only hurt things for me. Eject. Ow, oh, that almost killed me. Okay, we can actually tell, like, where the guns are on this, on the spider mech. Oh, he, he rotated around to make it oh, more difficult for me. All right, we we killed him. We killed the we killed the boss. That was actually a really decent boss. I appreciate that it wasn't like overwhelmingly difficult. I appreciate that this game starts off actually pretty comfortable. You don't you don't feel like you're being overwhelmed right away. New progression cir system circuit board. Find chips and assemble your own circuit board with new with their new and unique progression system. More info soon. I really I don't know still um, if this is a rogue light or RPG technology rules, rule set V2, large network rework on the gameplay rule set for strong balance. Um, if I had a preference, I would love to see this be just kind of like an RPG-ish game where you're like upgrading your, your dude and, and moving through a, like a linear progression. 
um, rather than the the roguelite thing. I don't know. Maybe maybe this game will actually do the uh, the roguelite meta progression thing in a way that I, I might enjoy. Who knows? But anyway, yeah, this was synthetic too, and I think it actually bangs pretty good. Uh, let's have a look at the next game. All right, this is Super Dungeon Maker Fink's Awakening. Now, you can probably tell uh, based on that uh, title alone what kind of game you can expect here. Uh, th I've been I've been kind of off and on tracking the progression of this game for a while and it's got some really interesting things going on. What can I say about this right away? Well, if you are a Zelda fan, you'll probably enjoy this game. And if you are interested in like things like Mario Maker or Dreams or other various uh, kinds of make your own game type engine type games, then this will appeal to your sense of creativity. Uh, this is this is a basically a uh, Zelda maker. I heard in the future you will be able to visit dungeons by builders from all over the world right here in the local Henan farm. Okay, so yeah, this is you'll be able to share your dungeons. I kind of hope that there's a reason to play other players dungeons other than like the Mario Maker thing where you're trying to find your own fun. I, I think that something that a lot of these games need more of is like a reason to design good dungeons in that they will offer progression to the player in some form. We can we can destroy grass here. Do we have combos? So this might be the uh, built-in dungeon and we can kind of see what we could expect from the dungeon designer. I will have a look at the designer once we've played the game a little bit. Oh, whoops. I straight up thought that we could cross that. Taking a little bit of damage, that's okay. Can we cross? We... This is a, uh, it's, hmm, what do we, this isn't where I left. Oh, interesting. That's a little odd. I feel like that's not where I died. <laughs> okay, you gotta, you gotta wait for him to uh, pop up. Do we have a, we don't have a dodge roll. For some reason I expected a dodge roll even though the roots of this game are very obvious and there's no there's no dodge roll in uh, that's not honestly a, I never it's never occurred to me before that there's no dodge roll in Zelda games All right got some health in the grass Got ourselves a key let's go uh, Put the key in something. I keep walking into traps and stuff by accident. That is my bad. Good thing there's lots of health around. All right. Ooh, new item. Aha. What is this? How do I how do I use that? How does one use that? Oh, that's that's shift. Oh, we 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 now have a dodge roll. <laughs> okay. Can I dodge roll across this? We can. Oh, nice. There doesn't seem to be a cooldown. This is actually quite a uh, robust little dodge roll for this kind of game. Can we go across this? No, we can't. That, uh, now, we, we were not here. <laughs> I think I'm trapped on this side now. I think I'm actually soft blocked. Yeah, we're, we're soft blocked. Okay, exit the dungeon. Do you know our ancestors used to live in the trees? Yo, technically anyone can say that. Yeah, not just birds. You know, our ancestors lived in the trees as well. It's true. So is this gonna be the same dungeon? It looks like it is. I'm gonna be a bit more careful not to fall into traps and get killed. We'll say that the combat is maybe a little bit stiff. Could be just me though. I'm actually not sure how we beat this dungeon without basically exploiting it. This is a, this is a little strange. Cause like, I'm not seeing a way of like popping these switches. If I hadn't died and appeared across there, then I would not have been able to pull that switch. Huh. Do we have a key? No, we don't. I am wondering how to complete this level. Like normally. Like we can fall down there and then we can do, do that. But this is, it's a little bit, str oh, unless, uh, Falling down the hole isn't necessarily like it's not just like you're taking damage. You're actually falling to the previous to the, the, the floor below 
could be that the, that is the intended mechanic. That's not like dark. So there is, I can tell that there's actually floor beneath it. So I could actually fall down here as well and there'd be something there. So let's check that out. We don't, yeah, in fact, we don't even take damage when we fall to a, a level below. Obviously there's no tutorial, so I'm, I'm not being like taught these things, but that is an interesting mechanic. I'm sure that was a Zelda thing as well, but I, you know, it might be that the game has its own novel mechanics, its own additions to the genre which, you know, I think is is great. So if we, fell, if we fall there, there's nothing there, right? Right. Sometimes in order to like understand how a game works, I need to, I need to test things, even if, even if that means taking some extra damage. Okay, so we got our dodge roll again now. I do like the dodge roll. I think it's a good dodge roll. So now we should try and get there. We don't have a key, but, uh, or maybe we need to get the, the key that was over here. There's a key over here, right? Okay, so what we got to do is pull the switch and then hop across. Yeah, okay, so we need to pop this and then dodge across and then dodge across here. Fun use of the dodge roll. I like that the dodge roll... Oh, wait a minute. We can't get back, though. Uh, I wonder if I'm meant to fall down. I think this might be it. No, this is the beginning of the dungeon. Hmm... I have to I have to admit that the the this puzzle's got me a little bit flummoxed and you know what that's kind of I I I'm appreciating that the you know we got we got an interesting puzzle right away. Okay, so maybe we can't do this yet. This uh this door is like just fully blocked. Okay, how do we get how can we get here? Hmm. Oh, well, we could we could dodge across that and fall down here. Ah, all right. But didn't I do this and isn't this how we fail in the first place wait a minute I don't think I fell down here aha that's how you do it okay interesting interesting puzzles that's what I get for for making claims like oh I think I got soft blocked nah I just didn't solve the puzzle okay so now we have to come here hit this I appreciate that there's like basically no cooldown to the dodge roll I'm sure they they might reconsider that because it is it does feel a little bit overpowered. Ooh, this guy is like throwing little forks and stuff. Ow. Nice. With the dodge roll, the combat is a little bit more, uh, it flows a little bit more nicely. Maybe we'll, you can unlock things like combo attacks, break the grass so we can, oh yeah, health, get that health. Nice. So we just need to, I guess we need to find a second key which I find odd. I don't remember seeing a second key. Oh, we have a charge attack. That charge attack is very stiff. <laughs> Yo, I'm just gonna say that. I I think that maybe some of these animations could be spiced up a little bit. If we fully explored this. Oh, no, we haven't. Nice. So you got you got your classic rooms that lock you inside until you defeat the enemy. This uh, this game is doing a good job of like feeling like Zelda, but also doing its own thing as well. It definitely doesn't feel like a carbon copy. Indies have innovated on the Zelda format enough times now that I feel like this is its own genre. It's you know the dungeon crawler basically. Ooh, okay, we got a boss. Oh, this is cool. And then he switches. Ah, that's kind of neat. I like that. Nice. <laughs> the explosions are, are a nice touch, I guess. Yes, we got the golden egg. We got the MacGuffin. All right. So there's a there's our test dungeon. Can we have a look at the, the creator? So let's have a look at the creator real quick. So this is... <laughs> This is our, our starting dungeon, which is right now, it's just like you enter the dungeon and complete it. It's already complete. So we could maybe put in some extra rooms. Can we like increase the size of these rooms? It's actually, it is very um, intuitive. It's you left click to create room and you right click to create wall. So it's, it's, it's really easy to just like right away create something. We've got our starting room and it shows us that yes, these these two rooms right now are independent rooms. I've done a good job of like creating a separation between them. So then we can do things like we could add some trees. 
trees are like animated very nicely. I could put a key in here. Let's create a we'll create a second dungeon room. Oh, we can just move it. Okay. So there's a there's a little bit of a learning curve. There's actually the the controls are quite nice. Like they 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 keep things pretty simple. It really is uh, Mario Maker esque. Oh, we have we could do like some spikes. That's adding a one. Is there a way to like change that one? Oh, we have like uh, cracked walls. We can add cracked walls. So the, those are like walls that um, are gated. Like you need to acquire a um, a bomb before you can do before you can open them up. Let's create like an extra room here. Okay, so we know that that works. Oh, and we can like swap. We can swap uh, floors. So this is the basement, which I created by make a floor downwards. And you can swap between like play and build very easily. So I guess this room, maybe the red just means that this is the starting room. I completely missed it. There are um, some controls here. Ooh, that was a mistake. Can I control Z? Please let me control Z actually. Uh, I'm not seeing an undo. That, that needs to change. We need an undo. Yo. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing an undo, so that's, uh, that's kind of unfortunate. If you make a, make an unfortunate mistake like that, you, you're gonna undo quite a lot of work. I'm not even sure how to fix things now. Okay, that's good. Ah, uh, there we go, there we go. So all I'll say is, like, be careful with that fill tool. You know, it's just like in real life. I say it's in, like, like in real life, but you know what I mean. There we go. I mean, this this looks a bit better now. I wonder if you can increase the size of your pen. I, there's definitely stuff left to do for this game. Can we make a, like, you have to put out all the fires for the room to work? I wonder what kind of, what we have, what options we have for, like, secrets and stuff. So these are our power-ups. We can add a chest. Can we put something in the chest? How does one, how does one change the chest? Ah, uh, okay, so you have to place something down and then move it into the chest. That's a little bit cumbersome, but I mean, it, once you've figured it out, then, you know, you're good. Can you make a chest only appear once all of the enemies are? I'm assuming this is, uh, this demo is just that, a demo. We don't have nearly all of the tools that we, uh, will get once, once the game is released. All right, let's, let's like, let's like make this dungeon actually playable. How does one make a door locked? Ah, yeah, some of these controls are a little bit funky. You gotta like move it on to the, the door. Okay, so is this can, does this mean that this room will close? Once you've done something, it's kind of hard to undo something. Well, let's uh, let's put that on there and see what happens. And then and then we'll let's let's play this. Let's see what happens. Oh, uh, this is this is wrong. Did we just leave? Oh no! How do we get back in? Will this be our our level's gone. No! Okay. All right, so I mean, the editor is a little bit rough right now, um, but you know what? Don't uh, don't judge it too quickly or harshly because you know, they're they're still in their alpha state. It sucks that we couldn't at least like play our, our level before uh, I, I completely destroyed it by accident there. Um, but this is Super Dungeon Maker Fink's Awakening. Uh, I think that this game has the potential to be really cool when it is released. Maybe keep an eye on it when it's a little bit more ready. Let's have a look at another game. All right, this is War Tales. Um, you probably, if you've been watching the E3 stuff at all, you probably saw something like this. Uh, I think it was on the PC gaming show. And this one looks like it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be ambitious, a quite interesting looking game. It looks really pleasant. And I, I, I am down for the genres this game is trying to tick or the, the tick boxes for this one. Merchant Sun, oh, choose your destiny. You start with 30 more influence, you start with 50 more crowns okay because so you can start with more influence or more money let's uh let's start as a army veteran so i think this is go going for almost like a tactics version of like mount and warband or mount and blade 
uh, where you start very simply, you start with like maybe one character and you RPG yourself around the uh, this open world and accrue some renown, some reputation. And then eventually you, you can recruit new characters, new allies, and maybe even create a army uh, to, to, you know, shape the world. And it, it's really going for that. Like you start, you start humbly and and small, and then eventually you can like, it almost turns into a, a 4x game where you're managing kingdoms, other locations, and uh, you know uh, uh, turns a bit more macro than micro. Shiro Games is proud to present the very first version of War Tales. It is an alpha version. Bear that in mind. Problems are going to ensue. You know, you're, we're going to see some issues. That that's okay. So, I mean, right away, dang, this looks pretty. We got a little bit of frame hangups. That's probably on my end is, you know, might be the game is still loading in. That's okay. We're almost, this almost looks like a Civ game right away, but there, there's no hexes where we're actually moving around freeform on the landscape. Let's try, let's check out some of these shinies. This almost feels like a compromise between a Civ and an RPG. Oh. Okay, so we've got some baddies. Let's uh, let's check out the combat. All right, so what do we got? We got these are the, our character names, and we can. I'd like to think that what kind of weapons they're holding tell us what kind what what can expect from them. Okay, so move, ram, taunt, and then we have our shoot. That's our range, I think. So let's uh, let's move our ranger up, and then shoot someone. Range. Of the next attack is doubled and precision is enhanced interesting okay well let's just go for wait a minute what does that say lock preview oh that's cool that's a nice little quality of life feature all right so let's uh let's and it tells us exactly how much damage it's going to do i assume that's six to ten so we don't necessarily know 100 percent. so we've got a little bit of uh an you know XCOM mechanics here can we not can we only move one unit per turn oh Interesting. All right. Oh, that was okay. That was uh, we did move that one unit. I guess this is the turn order. You can use any unit that hasn't taken part in this round. Okay, so we do have we have a lot of control over who we're moving. But once we've started moving a character, that's it for that turn. But because we have more units, we're gonna have more turns. Okay, I, I actually do like that. Let's uh let's ramp takes deals six damage to all units in the area. Damage is increased by fifty percent against units that still have armor. Well, this guy still has armor, so let's go ahead and ram this dude. Ram him, smack. That's satisfying, I like that. And what do we got? Disengage, withdraws from combat, triggers an attack of opportunity from the opponent. I love attacks of opportunity opponents. It really, um, it, it puts me in a kind of a comfort zone. Uh, it may, basically harkens back to my D&D 3.5 days. I, I do also like attacks of opportunity as a mechanic because it means that once you've engaged with an enemy, you're kind of in there uh, and it gives you a kind of a risk for, for leaving. You can't just like run in, uh, make an attack and leave, you know. Forces the target to engage and inflicts weakening to them for one round. We could do something like this. Oh, this, uh, okay, so that's going to cost us one valor point. Use your valor points in combat to use certain skills. You re you'll regain some of them each turn you rest. Okay, well, let's not use that then. Oh, we really put our dude in there, in, in the line of fire. But that did some knocks, knockback, so maybe he can disengage now. But he's already moved, so now we got to move someone else. 30% triggered when this unit attacks an, an engaged enemy from behind. Okay, so let's 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 try that. Stab him. <clears throat> nice. Gains fury. Well, that that's going to use up all our valor. We don't want to do that. And now let's uh, let's see. This guy deals six to eight damage to the target. First aid heals all heals an ally for 10% of their max health and removes all debuffs. Okay, well we don't need that necessarily yet. Let's get him in there. We'll slice this dude. It's gonna remove his armor, gonna deal some health damage. And now it's gonna be the enemy's turn. Ouch. All, whoa, and they're poisoned as well. Okay, so that's nasty. Um, but we can use our first aid on this guy. It'll recover some of their health and it'll get rid of the poison, I'm assuming. Um, that, did re that did require some valor. We can also attack in the same turn, so let's do that. We wanna get the ram going let's let's go in and, and and ram them both solid smack one of them is dead very good galvanization 
damage increased by 50%. I, uh, you know, very early impressions, but I actually already really like this. Shoot him. No! Friendly fire! Uh-oh. Oh no, that was, that was bad. That was really unexpected. Now, if I move around him, is he gonna get an attack of opportunity? I don't think so. Um, I noticed this guy actually moved with him, so he, he I'm still not gonna get the backstab. So you can't just like dodge around someone and do more damage. Well, that went well. We did take a little bit of damage. Damaged armor. Oh, the damaged armor is not like, that actually does cost us. We got a bit of money, probably useless remains then again. Oh, we could take it. I don't know if it does any good. For us. We got a bit of influence, some experience points. Let's repair our armor. Uh, it does cost raw material, so we're, we're gonna have to, we're gonna want to replenish that at some point. And then our uh, dude here, I think he leveled up, so we can increase him. He is our ranger, so we're probably gonna want to increase his dexterity. Oh, he's our ranger, but he's our, our uh, rogue-ish character. Maybe improving his movement would actually be a good idea. So that was a good um, first, like, let's, you know, checking out of the, the tactics, the mechanics. C collect some more stuff. I, I really do like the look of this overworld. This is very pretty. It, it really immediately puts me in that almost fantasy, classic fantasy mindset. This this look, this feel really kind of puts me in that classic, like you're, you're on an adventure, travelers seeking new places, uh, seeking a little bit of glory and stuff. It's It really is kind of like a, a classic feel, look and feel. I, I, I just like, I love the look of this. It, it's very pleasant. So let's check out the Riverside sta Stables. Maybe we can get a horse. If you could like get horse and then uh, maybe the, the, the travel time on the overworld is, is much better. Let's talk to our, our, our fellow here, Theric. When I think of how many people don't shoe their horses, it makes me want to pull out the little hair I have left. Nice little uh, flavor dialogue there. Oh, we could steal from him. Can we buy a horse? Tell you what, buy a horse from us and I'll throw in the horseshoes for free. Um, all right, we can talk to ponies. We can talk to Helen. Though the war in Edoran was a boon for my business, I cannot help but feel for my poor horses. I can tell you aren't soldiers. Take them with you if you can. They would most likely die on the battlefield through no fault of their own. Talk to the pony. Recruit. Costs 150 currency. I can't remember what they went with crowns. So I mean, this is, in a way, this is a you know, it is a fantasy in that it is not the real world. But I, I don't think that you're gonna meet dragons or goblins in this world. It's a uh, it's a fantasy in that it's it's a different political landscape and a different environment. So yeah, we we actually like have a lot of options and interaction with this small i don't have enough money to to get a horse so I'm, I'm just gonna take off so we are on the march we are seeking out glory and valor and much bandits to kill let's uh let's see what we got here some more flowers i don't know what this is what, what is this comfrey this flower is used to craft medicines comfrey is plentiful in prairies and fields so component we have crafting strom cap it's like a little village, but you, there's lots of stuff we could do here. Maybe we can get a quest. I was wondering if I stopped, if these guys would stop moving, but uh, that is not the case. So there is like a real time thing going on. Oh, so we, we do have lots of stuff. Three hairs market. Damn, this game looks really pretty. Hadonus. Come, come, take a look at my wares. Leather, we could buy some leather rope. Amber. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna fight some more stuff. I wouldn't mind checking the blacksmith just to uh, see what kind of stuff we can, you know, like armor and weapons we can buy. Maybe we, oh, we can forge our own stuff. Select a blacksmith. Who is our blacksmith? Well, let's make it the brute. Oh, okay. We've now made him a blacksmith. Can learn blueprints and forge items in a village forge. Okay, that's interesting. So different units can have different professions and that makes them even more valuable. You might actually go out of your way to protect some of these units knowing that they, they have the abilities and the skills to craft different uh, items. That's really cool. Um, that's a that's a really interesting way to, to add more value to these units and, and make them more like people than just like, oh no, our ranger died. We're just going to have to go and get another ranger, except that ranger won't have the ability to make like the armor like ours did. So you can make quilted tunic, 
but we need leather and cloth. I'm wondering if in order to level him up as a blacksmith, we need to like make, get him to make really crappy things for a little while. We almost have enough, we have enough ore. If we could get some wood, that would be good. I wonder if we can go chop down some trees. Apothecary feast inn. Let's go to the inn. Maybe we can get a quest. This is exactly the kind of game you want to get a quest. Let's talk to our innkeep. Say, it's not often you see new faces around here. Well, except for the Edoran War refugees, that is. Feel free to come back often. There's always folks looking for work around here, especially since all the fighting started to cross the border. Okay, well, what about our emissary, Ben Ali? Looking for work? Envoys ensure that every service request is fulfilled. Our offers are regularly updated. All right, oh, difficulty hard. Okay, so it tells us like right away what we can expect. Itis gang is responsible for many instances of livestock theft in the area. The Exasperated farmers have decided to pitch in to put a stop to these crimes. Let's take that one. That one's easy. Tells us where to go. We know what to do. Should take notes. If you're a player in an RPG, you should always take notes. Where do you go? Ask questions. If, if you think you've asked all the questions, ask more questions. I'll tell you why. Because even if the DM or the GM hasn't prepared that kind of information, it'll get them thinking about it. And GMs love that. Good ones anyway. I think that a good GM will appreciate uh, an intelligent question because it means that their players are actually thinking about how, you know, the immersion of their world. Those look like bandits. I don't know. I, I, we're, we're on a quest. We're, we're going to deke out of that potential fight. Ask about motivations. Ask about locations. Oh, is that some lumber? Oh, we need that. Ask about patterns, you know, like, where do they go? What do they like to do? These bandits that we need, we need to kill for the farmers. Why? Oh, oh, I see that. That was not an arbitrary cooldown. Okay, let's make a campsite. I wonder if we have to like, how in depth this is going to be. Like, do we set up um, sleep patterns so that someone is always awake during the night? Workshop, a makeshift workshop where your companions can make a number of useful items. Must be assigned to the workshop. Well, I'm trying. I am trying to do that. It seems like we cannot select a uh, goal with to the workshop. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. It won't let me. So I'm, I'm gonna leave that for now. All right, so let's go ahead and, oh, we, we can make some food. Wages to pay, none. Oh, uh, we need to feed our dudes. Okay, nice little time lapse. You have gained two action points. The troops, the troop is well rested. Ooh, is it nighttime? Alta Salt Mine. That's where the Smash Bros announcements come from. Sakurai is hard at work at the salt mine. Easy joke, low hanging fruit. So we do burn quite quite a lot of energy by traveling over the landscape, but there are spoils to gain. I have a very poor memory, so I need to check the map often. Looks like you're gonna be moving into a colder region in order to uh, seek out these bandits. What do we got here? Oh, these uh, these seem like oh, good people. Maybe let's let's talk to these guys. No, that those are not good people. But this is the I Idis gang. These are the people that I am trying to fight and kill. Okay, let's do that. All right, we have two units that we need to take out. You can place a companion here before the battle starts. Um, but let's go ahead and move this guy here. This guy is facing that way. Let's let's get them all in there. Well, we have, we have two turns before this guy gets to do something. It would be nice if we could take him out. Maybe rather than going in, we want to let them come to us a little bit and we can take an extra couple of shots with the ro ranger. I'm not sure how far they can move. Okay, well, we, we could do some damage to this guy and then finish them, not finish them off, but... Ooh, did that take out all their armor? Oh, nice. Uh, I was hoping we'd actually have some armor left because we gain more damage if they do. So now that we know he doesn't... Okay, if we got a critical hit chance, there's a chance we could take this guy out right away and remove him from the board. Let's see if we can't do that. Oh, is this a cover? I didn't notice that. Ah, oh, I'm turned around. Dang. Oh, well. Um, that's kind of a problem, actually. I guess you only have to disengage after you've, like, dealt some damage. Yeah, that's, that's brutal. That's some really nasty damage right there. So I think what we should do in the future, um, if you're looking for tactics, I mean, this is, like, almost kind of standard D&D &D stuff, is you get the tank 
well, I mean, it's not just D&D. You get the tank to go in, engage the opponent, then they're facing away, then the rogue goes in and attacks from behind. All right, we're going to need a, another attack to finish him off. And unfortunately, this guy's going to get an attack. So that's that's actually a problem. I think what I'll do is I'll run in with our soldier type character here. And then we're going to heal him so we get rid of the poison. Uh, he Can he hit them? No, he can't. So that's the, un that's the end of that turn. Oh, ow. Is he dead? No. He's going to be dead for sure. Yeah, so he was like about to die. Oh man, this is this is actually a problem. Okay, I have to I have to engage with this guy. All right. Ah, that poison. He's going to die. He is going to die. He's he's the one who's about to attack, so I guess I should finish him off. Galvanization. Okay, that's good. Except this guy is like about to take some serious poison damage, dying. Everyone's dying. Taunt. Maybe I, I have this guy run in and taunt him. Oh, is this like whole area poisoned? Oh, this guy, this is rough. Both of these guys are gonna die. I really don't wanna fire in there on the, on the off chance that uh, I, I accidentally hit one of my allies. Do you really wanna end Gullwit's turn without taking any action? I mean, I can, I can try, but like, he has a 23% chance of hitting him, meaning that he has an almost 80% chance of hitting one of his allies. So yes, I, I don't think I want to do... Oof. So I just lost a unit. Waldenen is about to die. You cannot use this ability if the companion is dying. This is rough. My god. Um, so I tried to disengage and that made him take some really nasty damage. He is poisoned. This, this looks like a wash. Yeah, I'm about to lose like the whole troop. Oh my god. And this guy is still here. Okay, well, he did hit him. That's something. That's literally anything. Ow. Oh, my God. Get him out of the poison. He's dead. Oh, no. No. He has how much health? Seven. He's not going to be able to hit him. He's not going to be able to kill him. He's dead. And that is the end of our adventure. Which makes me the worst troop ever. Did it just become nighttime? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, 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 like, what do I do? Run away? So retreat? Do you want to sound the retreat and give up the battle? Yeah. I wonder if this is one of those games where you, uh, like, yeah, this sucks. It, a lot of people would probably s stop playing here and, like, start a new game. But, like, maybe this is one of those games where you, it creates interesting narratives. Like this guy here, he just lost like his two friends and now we need to kind of regroup, try again, maybe recruit some new allies. What is this? All your in items are stored in your inventory. I'm assuming that our, we're now over encumbered because we have less people carrying stuff. Cannibalism, excuse me. Learn cannibalism, it's fantastic. I guess we're just gonna get rid of some of this stuff. Drop some of this stuff. Okay, so now we can move a little bit better. I don't know if we have any food. This really is like, a dire situation, but it does make for an interesting narrative. If you could actually recover from this, that would be really cool. All right, we gotta, we gotta stop. I don't think we have any food, so I am not sure how this is gonna go. You haven't fed your troop. Do you wanna rest anyway? I mean, I have to, right? Your troop is hungry. Your companions are unhappy. You have lost 10 influence. Yeah, I mean, my troop is mostly dead. Have a little compassion. We do have a horse, so it would be nice if I could ride the horse. I'm not sure how you recover from something like this. I did kill one of the members of the Itis gang. So I'm wondering, uh, do they stay dead? Like, is that now part of the game? Like, if I went and find some more members, like, could I go back and try and kill the Itis gang? I'm honestly not sure what, what I'm hoping to find in Stromcap, but I guess I'm hoping that there'll be some people I can recruit. Traveler's Feast Inn. I should have checked out the Apothecary. Maybe I could have gotten some food or something. Magrick, is this someone I can recruit? I'm at your service provided you pay me handsomely. Sure. Uh, we do have enough to recruit them. And then someone else, can we recruit this person? Adventure calls. We don't have enough, unfortunately. We're just, we're just short of everything. That's unfortunate. Um, apple pancake. Wow, that's a very expensive apple pancake. We could learn the recipe to make apple pancake. Troop bonus increases the troop's happiness. All right, let's let's uh, let's buy an apple pancake and some beer. We'll check out the apothecary. 
I'm assuming you can like make potions and stuff. New profession alchemist. Let's uh let's see if we can okay, this works. Medicine. Snow iris. We need we need supplies. We can't do any of that yet. Let's see what happens. Can I make our tinker also a blacksmith? I'm assuming no, but you know, you never know. I want to make this guy. There we go. There doesn't seem to be any options to like break things down. Like I have this like rusty hammer. Can I only sell it? Can use my anvil for a few crowns. I can also repair your armor. Oh, I'm also I'm looking to hire a skilled blacksmith if you happen to know one. Well, I have a not skilled blacksmith. Maybe you could uh, hire them. I don't even seem to be able to sell the stuff I have. I'm not sure where I would sell them. I guess it's not the kind of game where you can like go to literally anyone and be like, hey, do you want to buy my actual garbage? Okay, we can sell our rusty hammer. We can sell it. Okay, this is the game where you can just like sell our garbage. And they're different shopkeeps. They have different stuff. Let's uh, let's buy some food. I'm just gonna we're gonna we'll buy a myriad of different food. I mean, like we spent all our money, but that's fine. We need food. Where can we go to heal my ranger? Cause they're like almost dead. My medicines can heal the most grievous injuries. Injuries. Hold on to the vials after using them. Oh, that would, that would have been smart. It would have been smart if I had like saved some money, huh? Oh, human remains. <laughs> you mean, I mean, like, if the, if someone was going to buy them, it would be the apothecary, I feel. Maybe, I, maybe I'm being um, a little generalizing in that regard. I mean, like, hell, I, I don't care about this game. Let's, uh, I mean, like, I care about this game, but I don't care about this specific story. So let's try stealing something. Oh, new profession thief. Oh, you have to be a thief. Let's make Magrick a thief. Confirm. Steal one medicine. Do it. Got caught while committing theft. The companion has been handed over to the guard and sent to Tiltrin Prison. You are now wanted. You should leave the area as soon as possible. Uh-oh. Okay, so these were, like, the law enforcement, and they b were okay with me before, but they're not now. <laughs> so this, again, kind of adds to the to an in, you know the interesting narrative. We could go and try and break out our friend Magrick. This tells us our wanted level, which is now much higher than it was. <laughs> This is, this is unfortunate. I mean, I, I think this is like genuinely game over, but you know, what really is unfortunate is that we had a second character and we could have maybe recovered a little bit, tried a second attempt at killing the Itis gang. Let's uh, check out the salt mine. Let's see what's available there. Maybe we can like get a job as a, as a miner. Halt, the salt mine belongs to Mayor Aldrich. I can't just let you walk in. Threaten, persuade. Okay, persuade, yeah. As you wish, the salt can't be mined because of those two iron veins. Anyway, I don't get why you were so keen to get in. Oh, we can pick up the iron ore. New profession miner. <laughs> we're finding all of, all of the professions, but in a way that's, I, I'm, I'm glad because it's uh, really show, showcasing like the depth that is available in this game. Oh, we have a mini game. Should, are we supposed to be clicking this? There we go. I do hope that they add a little bit of optimization or they work on the optimization of this game because it does struggle a little bit on the performance side. Okay, so we gained some experience. We're, we're, we're ex gaining experience as uh, miners. Maybe we can gain some uh, money and pay off the uh, enforcement. And in that way, we could recover at least reputation. We gained a ruby, oh nice. To try and offer closure to this very miniature story, um, we'll go and sell the ruby. Maybe we ha we'll have enough money we can um, pay the bail for our friend Magrick and then get our second companion back. If I can do that, then I will uh, attempt to kill the Itis gang one more time. I guess this game really is true to its name. It is it is a sandbox for interesting stories. It is war tales. It, it's, it really is trying to create those kind of interesting, you know, long-term narratives that players can like share with each other let's sell our ruby i'm hoping it's gonna bring in the fat cash well uh, it's not as much as i was hoping for but it's something we can sell some of our iron as well actually the iron is like pretty valuable as well um so now the question is do we hire someone else we don't really have a lot of influence so we won't be able to recruit someone so let's try and get our friend magrick back oh you know what i just realized our our we are wanted. We're, we're not going to want to bump into the enforcement there. Our dude here is still not, 
great. He's he's not happy. Oh no, wages to pay. Danger level. Danger. Okay. When danger's abound, an attack can occur while your troop rests. Is there any way to help recover this dude? Damage taken by increased by 50%. He is Oh, treat injury. Use medicine? Did we actually get some medicine? Oh yeah. Heck yeah. Well, that's that's actually fantastic. We recovered quite a bit there. All right, now let's try and get our friend Magrick back. I'm just going to try and pay bail. I'm not going to try any funny business. I'm going to assume we have the ability to pay bail, and I'm going to assume that it's way easier to pay bail than it is to try and break our friend Magrick out of prison. Just stay off the road. No! No, they saw us. No, run! Run! Oh, God. You're wanted for a number of crimes. All right, how much to pay? Yeah, I'll, I'll pay 20. Thank you for your contribution, but don't let this happen again. Okay. All right, we're, well, at least there was a, a peaceful resolution there. What do you mean? No, 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 help me. Oh, I, I really hope that we're close enough that the uh, law enforcement is going to help us. Yo, law enforcement, you better help. They're just not here. Yo, it's just like real life, man. This is awful. Retreat. Yeah. Well, that was a lot of nothing. That was that was kind of odd. The fact we could just like retreat. Did they? I don't know if we lost anything for doing that. Okay, let's check out the prison. We'll get Ma Malgrick back. If there's one place the outlaws avoid, it's this prison. But some end up vacationing here anyway. If you catch my drift, hand over a prisoner. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, I want my my friend back. Oh, there there is our friend Magrick. At last. Do you know how long I have been rotting in this place? Recruit for eighty. We needed 80? That was how much I had. I had that much at one point. Interesting. We, we've we learned some stuff, but uh, unfortunately, Malgrick is lost. And I, I'm going to let this story close here. <laughs> if I was going to do a series on War war Tales, and you know what? I just might. Um, this game is exactly my, my jam. I love it. I, I love how this game is offering just a really kind of intricately designed sandbox for stories and narratives. Um, it's a little bit more robust than your standard like RPG. You're not just like playing to like get a new piece of loot or uh, a new you know this or that or level up. You're you're playing this to see something interesting. And even if you lose, I mean, it's like one of those games where losing is interesting. It's it's actually part of the fun. I would actually go try and and go with this. You know, like we we figured out we could actually gain some money in some very non like combative ways we could go and get a job we could maybe even become a merchant i wonder if that's an option you know we have enough food we can survive so long as we are able to like fend off bandits and stuff we could try and raise enough money where we could get our friend malgrick or magrick back so i mean this is really cool like recovering from these tough positions is is actually more interesting in some ways than if we had just like accomplished the quest in the first place um, I like how the professions work. I like how, you know, characters are very significant. I assume once they're dead, they're gone. Like, there's no... And that's going to do it for today's Next Fest demo binge. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like it. And consider subscribing for more content. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time.